we are broadcasting from Toronto, Canada. I am Elsa Abraham. Kindly take note of our weekly activities and satellite channel. On Mondays, we'll report on COVID-19. Tuesdays are African news. And Wednesday is African history. Thursdays are entertainment and Friday is editorial. Sunday is entertainment and Sundays are your say. Our satellite broadcasting has begun. Kindly take note of our satellite channel frequency. Now start vertical 12728. Symbol rate 27500. FEC 5 slash 6. We'll bring you more details after this short break. Kindly stay with us. In today's headlines, 166 die during protests after shooting of Ethiopian singer and 1,084 people have been arrested. How Hakalu Hundesa's murder reveals Ethiopia's political division, Egypt says its new proposal supports Ethiopian goal in dam talks. Now let's go for the news in details. At least 166 people have died during the violent demonstrations that rolled Ethiopia in the days following the murder of popular singer Hakalu Hundesa, police said on Saturday. The singer, a member of the Oromo ethnic group, Ethiopia's largest, was shot dead by unknown attackers in Addis Ababa on Monday night, fueling ethnic tensions threatening the country's democratic tension in the aftermath of Hakalu's death. 145 civilians and 11 security officers have lost their lives in the unrest in the region, said Gemma Gela, Deputy Police Commissioner of Oromia Region. Another 10 are known to have died in the capital of Addis Ababa. German said that a further 167 had sustained serious injuries and that 100 and uh, 1,084 people have been arrested. Officials have attributed the deaths to a combination of lethal force by security officers and inter-ethnic violence. Gemma added that the violent unrest had now completely stopped. Hakalu's vo music gave voice to Oromo's widespread sense of economic and political marginalization during years of anti-government protests that swept the Prime Minister Abi Ahmed to power in 2018. Moving on to our next story for the day, how Hakalu's Handesa murder reveals Ethiopia's political divide. Firol Ajema and his friends, dressed in black t-shirts, have been meeting each afternoon in recent days to listen to the music of Ethiopian pop star Hakalu Handesa. The home main shirts bearing the dead singer's portraits and the slogan, I am also Hakalu, are their way of honoring the man whose murder on Monday sparked violence that killed at least 166 people and highlighted Ethiopia's simmering ethnic tensions. We haven't been able to properly mourn, said Firo, a university student in the town of Legitafo, outside Addis Ababa where security has been tight since the killing. We are suffocating inside our own houses. Hakalu's death, which remains unsolved, was destined to become a political flashpoint. In up tempo pop, in up tempo's pop star singer, riddled with political references, Hakalu gave voice to feelings of marginalization among fellow members of his ethnic group. Oromo, Ethiopia's largest ethnic group. His music was a soundtrack to anti-government protests that swept Prime Minister Abi Ahmed, the country's first Oromo leader, to office in 2018. People gathered to protest against the treatment of Ethiopia's ethnic Oromo group outside Downing Street in London, Britain, Canada and Diaspora. Yet, as Ethiopia prepares for elections that will test its democratic position under Abiy, many Oromo nationalists feel betrayed, arguing the Prime Minister has failed to champion their interests. 
opposition politicians claimed many of the deaths were instigated by security forces who had fired on protesters in multiple locations in Addis Ababa and the surrounding Oromia region. The killing has caused a lot of sadness among us. But the way the government is handling it is even worse, said Behuna Gadisa, also a student. It's totally unacceptable. The issue at the center of this week's crisis in the historic Oromo claim to Addis Ababa, which many ethnic nationalists refer to as Efenfeni, the name given to the territory before Emperor Menelik II founded the capital in the late 19th century. The catalyst for protests that swept Abi to power was the unveiling in 2015 of a master plan for Addis Ababa's expansion into Oromia. Hakalu's resting place has been contested, with some arguing he should be buried in Addis Ababa rather than his native Ambo to the west. He, had, he needed to be buried with respect inside Addis Ababa. Fine Fine belongs to the Oromo people. Firol said, government officials and some of Akalu's relatives, however, wanted him buried in Ambo, leading to an unseemly tussle over his corpse. Hakalu, who is also a former political prisoner, rose to prominence during prolonged anti-government protests, according to an account provided by Federal Police Commissioner Idesho Tessal, a group of Oromo nationalists, among them prominent opposition politician Jawa Mohammed. Interse intercepted the body en route to Ambo on Tuesday and tried to take it back to Addis Ababa, where they clashed with security officers. One police officer was killed and Jawa was arrested, further inflaming tensions in Oromia. Two days later, the funeral in Ambo turned deadly when soldiers opened fire on crowds of mourners in a botched attempt at crowd control. At least, Nine people were shot, two of them fatally, triggering fresh grief for Hakalu's fans. Even when many people go out to mourn his death, we lost more lives, said a student in Chala Toa. Eyes of the Oromo. Hakalu is now buried, but his killing has exposed divisions in Ethiopian politics. Jawa remains jailed alongside another prominent Oromo politician, Bekele Geba. Officials have provided scant information about the charges against the two men who are due to appear in court this month. And as Hakalu made clear in one of his final interviews, Oromo nationalist grievances are deeper than recent events. Last month, the singer called for the removal of a statue of Emperor Menelik II from the capital's Piazza neighborhood. While Menelik is widely respected as the creator of modern-day Ethiopia, for Oromo, nationalist, he embodies a system of marginalization. During the recent protest, a crowd advanced on the statue, seemingly intent on toppling it to make Hakalu's wish a reality, but security forces pushed them back. City police officers have been stationed around the statue since. For Fire back in Le Legitafo that Hakalu is dead and the statue stands says everything he needs to know about the government's priorities. While they should have been protecting this guy, they have been protecting the statue, he said. For me, Hakalu was not one person. He was the eyes of the Oromo people. And now they have blinded us. Moving on to our next story. Egypt says its new proposal supports Egyptian gold in dam talks. Egypt presented a new proposal in the dam negotiations that it said did not oppose development projects in Ethiopia, one of the parties involved in the talks reported. Egypt, which is almost entirely dependent on the river Nile for its fresh water, fears that the dam will diminish its water supply, which is already below scarcity level. Ethiopia hopes that the massive 4.8 billion US dollars mega project on the Blue Nile, which will generate 600,000 megawatts when completed, will allow it to become Africa's largest power exporter. 
the latest round of talks over the year's long disputes, which also involves Sudan, stalled after Ethiopia refused to enter into a binding agreement on the failing and the operation of the dam. A statement from the Egyptian Ministry of Water Resources and Irrigation said that a delegation had reviewed the country's water situation and people's sensitivity over the dam issue, which the ministry added was an existential one. It also referred to Egypt's efforts to reach a fair and balanced agreement, taking into account the interests of Egypt, Ethiopia, and Sudan, enhancing regional cooperation by issuing proposals that were consistent with international accepted brands. The ministry said that the Egyptian proposal achieved the Ethiopian goal of generating electricity and avoiding serious harm to Egyptian and Sudanese interests within the framework of implementing the Declaration of Principles and the method of dealing with any future projects on the Blue Now in a manner that ensured their consistency with principles of international law in relation to the use of shared rivers. The statement said that the Egyptian team had tackled the technical and legal aspects of the dam with monitors and clarified the most important Egyptian concerns regarding the various aspects of the agreement to fill and operate the dam in an attempt to bring the three countries' views closer. Egypt's Minister of Water Resources and Irrigation, Mohamed Abdel Ati, said that Ethiopia had several water resources but suffered when it came to managing and employing them. He said that Egypt had submitted a technical proposal to generate 85% of electricity that is to be produced by the dam. He added that Egypt was willing to cooperate to support development in Africa and Ethiopia, pointing to the establishment of a fund to support infrastructure linking Egypt with the now basin countries. Mohamed Nasser Alam, Egypt's former Minister of Irrigation and Water Resources, told Arab News that even with the proposal being presented, reaching an agreement during the current negotiations remained a weak possibility, and it may be more important to focus on achieving several important goals for the next possible UN Security Council meeting. He said that these goals included African and international support for Egypt's attempt to help Ethiopia achieve a fair and equitable use of water that achieved development for its citizens without harming Egyptians, African, and international support for the fairness of Egyptian Sudanese demand to carry out structural, environmental, and social safety studies regarding the implications of the dam and testimonies that the Ethiopia demand for a share of the Nile water, not supported by agreements, reduced the historical rights of Egypt and Sudan. Alam asked whether Egypt's, demand, Egypt's demands and African attempts to reach a settlement would succeed and end these urgent issues. Some 85% of the Nile water that reaches Egypt flows from Ethiopian highlands. The current talks are being held under the auspices of the African Union. This is where we end today's episode of our African News. Please like, share, comment. Let us know your thoughts on this particular episode. Thanks for watching.